And let's bring in Paul Beckwith. He's a climate system scientist. Paul, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Roger, for having me. Uh, I'm guessing, I think this may be one of the first days into the 30s uh, this year, in uh, at least in the Toronto area, but uh, in much of the country. Is this going to be uh, the norm for the summer? Um, I think so, because we're hitting uh, record high temperatures in the last few years. And uh, so we're going to get more and more of these uh, type of extreme weather events like heat domes, heat waves and things like that. And what and what is driving those heat waves and the heat domes? Well, the um, the jet stream is a big factor in these sort of uh, sort of things. So the jet stream is become very, very wavy in the north south direction. And so you get very powerful ridges and underneath these ridges is hot, uh, high pressure air. So there are very few clouds, a lot of heat, direct sunlight on the earth, heating it. And you can, if, if this sort of pattern with the jet streams gets stuck in place, then you can get these, uh, these heat domes, persistent uh, weather events. And now uh, in Saskatchewan, they're looking at the possibility of eight tornadoes may have touched down there this week. Uh, what's behind that? And can we expect that because of these heat domes in the hot summer, will we see those elsewhere in the country as well? Yes, so uh, this year has been a very active year uh, in the U.S. Uh, for tornadoes and other extreme uh, wind events. And uh, that's also carrying up into Canada. And we're actually seeing a shift in Tornado Alley from its uh, regular location in the U.S. to northwards and eastwards. Uh, we're seeing a definite shift. And, uh, you know, some years you get a lot more events. The, the the atmosphere is quite unstable. There's a lot of, with the additional heat, there's more convective uplift. And with more evaporation, because of the higher temperatures, more water vapor in the air. And that water vapor, when it condenses, it produ produces a lot of energy to the atmosphere. So a very active uh, kind of atmosphere. So with Tornado Alley moving north, are there things people can look for who may not be familiar with tornadoes in their area, but we might start seeing them? What are some signs that you could look and go, oh, we might be in for some bad weather? Well, mostly, um, you know, if, if you're kind of aware of the, of the weather situation in your area and, uh, you know, most people have smartphones and they can, you know, set up weather alerts for if there's warnings, et cetera. And uh, mostly, you know, just keeping an eye on the sky. I mean, if, if we see these really dark, ominous uh, storms approaching, at least kind of check your phone as to, you know, whether there's tornadoes in the forecast or so on. Okay. And, uh, so there's a lot of different signs that you, you can see. We just have to, you know, I think 100 years ago, people were a lot more in tune with weather, for example. Um, and, you know, now we have sophisticated technologies and stuff. People are like, you know, they're not paying as much attention as they might have previously to, uh, you know, what they see in front of their eyes. So I think we need to get back to a bit of that and don't just think, well, there's no tornado forecast, so I'm okay. And if the sky's pitch black and uh, winds pick up and so on, uh, we can have this better awareness and, and just uh, seek shelter. All right. A little, a little common sense. Paul, thank you very much for joining us today. We appreciate it. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for having me. Paul Beckwith is a climate system scientist.